Welcome to Surfaces and Splines, a series of SOLIDWORKS video tutorials presented by the Demonic Group. My name is Andrew Lowe. I'm an industrial designer with the Demonic Group. And in Surfaces and Splines, we take a look at the production tool-ready modeling of this work flashlight. In this installment, we'll take a look at starting the modeling of a handle. So the smooth, organically shaped handle will be constructed entirely with surface features. And that patch layout that we devised earlier is going to give us an idea of where we need to place sketches and 3D curves to build the surfaces. We're going to create the 3D curves by using another option on the projected curve. We previously used projected curve to project a sketch onto a face, but you can also project two sketches onto each other. So I have a sketch, a 2D sketch on the right plane, a 2D sketch on the front plane, and when projected together I get this 3D sketch shown in green. So here we can see this first sketch, we can see the second sketch, and when projected together, we get this uh, 3D curve. Note there's a bug in SOLIDWORKS with projected curve, where if a feature gets absorbed into another feature, it can be problematic picking it from the graphics window and adding relation. So as a rule of thumb, I always convert the projected sketch into a or a projected curve into a 3D sketch and uh, just hide these in the graphics window. So I'll do that, and let's take a look at how we built this first surface. So I created a couple point or uh, style spline here. Note we have our draft reference uh, helpers here and I've made that tangent. And then I've also placed a point on the projected or on the style spline and uh, made it coincident with the 3D sketch that uh, was converted from the projected curve. Likewise I also have a sketch here on the top. And I can kind of shape this by dragging these handles on the style spline. I like this. It's a nice uh, way of, of managing these curves. And now I see that I have a framework for this main handle surface. I have this edge and this edge of the draft reference surface. I have this other uh, 3D sketch profile. So I'm going to create a boundary surface between these profiles. So I'll just clear the selections here and we can uh, pick these again. So I'm going to create a surface between this edge I'll need to use the selection manager to pick this one entity in the 3D sketch, and finally this last edge. We'll shape this in direction 2 by picking these two curves. And now I'm going to need to apply tangency to this face, the draft reference, tangency to this face to ensure that I have the correct uh, draft. So building the feature, what I'm going to do is after I build the feature, I'm going to use the right plane, our pull direction, and I'm just going to verify that I have that correct 2 degrees draft. If I look, yep, perfect 2 degrees draft at the parting line, both sides. So this is the way I build the majority of my surfaces in SOLIDWORKS. I'm going to start by using sketches and edges, uh, projected curves, 3D sketches, to build a network that uh, shapes what my resultant surface will be. And then it's just a matter of dropping the surface uh, in between the, the profiles of the network we built. I'm going to create a surface extrude from the, from the right plane here. Note that I have that 2 degrees draft here. And this is going to be used to build the flat area where the, uh, the trigger or the on-off switch for the flashlight is. And I'll use a surface trim to trim out that shape. I'm going to continue building boundary surfaces in, our, uh, in various uh, profiles. So I have this sketch here and this sketch. So I've made pierce this to the trigger area. So this is going to form the profile of the second uh, half, the top half of the handle. And now I can build another boundary surface because I have this edge in the 3D sketch. I have this edge of my draft reference surface. Note the tangency to face. I have this lower edge of the main surface of the handle. And I added curvature to face to ensure that I have that curvature continuous connection. And uh, finally, this, this last sketch profile. So once I build that, I may want to turn off the, uh, the sketches. And I'll turn off my edges just evaluate, make sure I have a nice smooth connection, the light flows cleanly between the two different patches. If I turn on my zebra stripes here, we'll see I have a nice connection between the surfaces. 
So I'm going to create a curve network and then it's just a matter of dropping surfaces in between the curves on the network. I've created this main large boundary surface. Note that it's a big, large, four-sided surface. Uh, the shape doesn't change much. That's why it's a, a single surface. I built the trigger flat area. And then because this is a, a different shape, I don't want to have this surface be a part of the first handle or the first surface to the handle. So that's why I built it as a second surface and then use curvature to face to ensure that uh, connection. Note that I had to turn trim by direction one on. If I didn't have trim by direction one on, what would happen? Is that it would build that surface longer. And I'm going to use a surface fill, and we'll look at that next week, to, uh, to create this transition to the trigger area. So thanks for watching. Please follow the Armani Group on LinkedIn, where we'll be announcing new videos in the series.